Do you ever put on a freshly laundered shirt only to feel like the stinkiest of cheeses within a couple of hours? Or, on the contrary, wear a shirt that just seems to pass the smell test again and again, despite nothing changing in your showering or personal hygiene routine between the two? I have had this happen to me on multiple occasions before I got more conscious of the fibers in my clothes and while I have heard it talked about how polyester and other synthetic fibers don't breathe and therefore get more stinky, I felt like that did not truly answer the question of why synthetics like polyester and nylon get so stinky when we wear them. The argument of breathability especially seemed to fall apart when wearing a shirt with only 5 or 10% synthetics in it and it still got what I learned to recognize as that special synthetic stink. If it was truly only a breathability problem, surely the percentage of synthetics should have more of an impact on the stink. And why was it that some shirts seemed to be getting stinky faster and faster between each wash? Also, full disclosure, this video would not be possible if not for the excellent research done by Professor Rachel McQueen and her research group over at the University of Alberta. I will be referencing their work extensively throughout. To begin our query, we first have to understand what we're working with. What is sweat exactly, and why does it smell? Spoiler alert, sweat does not actually smell from the offset, that comes later. There are two kinds of sweat that we humans produce, apocrine and ecrine. Ecrine sweat is secreted all over our bodies and is mostly just water and salt, while apocrine sweat is secreted from the armpit and groin and is significantly higher in fatty acids. Neither smell on their own, but when bacteria on our skin break the fatty acids and dead skin cells down for food, smaller molecules that are smelly may be created depending on the bacteria. Different bacteria break down our fatty acids in different ways, and different people have different levels of different bacteria living on their skin, leading to different smells. Be they, as is the term used for the undesired smells we deem stinky, malodorous or not. This relationship between our biology and how different facets of it interact with the different types of clothing that we wear is not a field that has been studied very much at all until quite recently. But in many ways it all begins and ends with those microscopic friends and how they interact with the different textiles that we wear. Most of them prefer our skin, that's why they hang out there after all but some are more able than others to tolerate the cotton, linen, wool, polyester or nylon that we often clothe ourselves in. They will continue their work when transferred to our clothing along with the aforementioned fatty acids and dead skin cells. It bears to mention that viscose, rayon, bamboo viscose and other fibers living under the umbrella of regenerated cellulose have been left out of this video for simplicity and brevity, but one study I did find indicated that they largely behave similarly to other cellulose-based fibers like cotton and linen when it comes to smell. Extremely problematic chemically laden production issues aside, cotton, for example, is a hydrophilic fiber, meaning it loves water. It happily wicks the sweat and water from our bodies into its own fibers, making them heavy and wet. So much so does cotton hold on to water, in fact, that throwing a moist cotton shirt directly in the laundry hamper without drying it first can lead to a veritable bloom of whatever bacteria got transferred onto the clothes and a characteristically musty and unhappy scent. The family of bacteria most likely to grow in cotton are known as Staphylococci, and while they do produce some scent, they are generally not considered to be super stinky. But cotton's love story with water is also its saving grace, because when we throw cotton in the wash, it makes no difference whether it is new water from the washing machine or the sweat that we produced. Cotton loves all of it, so any undesired stink components are swiftly washed away with soap and water. 
Wool is a bit different, with an outer shell that is hydrophobic, meaning it does not like water, but an inner core that very much loves water. In practice, this means wool can absorb up to a third of its weight in water before it even feels moist, and it can lock sweat and any stink-making friends inside itself where they won't do much harm. This benefit is dampened, however, when wool is superwash treated. In both cases, the natural fibers absorb the sweat on the skin and leave the skin feeling dry and cool. Similar to cotton, wool also readily exchanges its water, allowing bad smells to be washed away. Even if a damp wool sweater will always smell slightly of sheep. Interestingly, in a comparison study between merino wool and polyester, while polyester was the most stinky one, Merino wool contained the most bacteria, and they also survived the longest in wool, debunking the idea that wool is antimicrobial. The bacteria count dropped significantly over time in polyester, but the malodorous stink very much remained, and in fact it got even worse seven days after participants had worn them. So what makes fibers like polyester and nylon so different? They are made from oil, for one, and sustainability issues aside, just like their predecessor, oil likes to hang out with other oils. They also really dislike water, which you've probably noticed if you've taken a polyester garment out of the wash and noticed that polyester already feels dry to the touch. It is also a favorite in sportswear, where its dislike for water helps it wick sweat from the body to the other side of the garment where it evaporates. This might seem like a good thing, but if polyester doesn't like water and casts sweat away as soon as possible, why is it getting so stinky? Well, especially for that apocrine sweat with fatty acids in it, this wicking acts like a sieve. Polyester hates water, yes, but it loves other oils and fat. So for all the sweat it wicks from one side to the other, it grabs onto those small amounts of fatty acids and concentrates them. Along for the ride comes, among others, a bacteria known as micrococci, which is able to live in polyester. And this is one of those bacteria that do break down fatty acids into the really stinky stuff. The stinky molecules are also oil-loving and water-disliking, so they cling onto the polyester fibers and accumulate over time. Because different bacteria thrive in polyester than on our skin, this is what gives rise to that telltale synthetic stink that is often very different from our own personal odor. Most of the work has so far been done with polyester, but similar findings are coming out for nylon as well. And the really interesting thing happens when we take our piece of clothing to be washed. Because a water-hating material does not magically start absorbing water if we just overwhelm it with more water. Say, if we were to throw it in the washing machine. If you watched one of my other videos where I talked about fluor compounds in textiles, polyester, which is often very densely spun and woven on account of the fibers being perfectly man-made straight, close ranks, and while water can pass through it on account of previously mentioned wicking properties, the soapy water is not really able to penetrate all the way into some of those really dense pockets where our stinky compounds are hiding, similar to how fluor atoms are protecting their carbon core. This means that all those little stinky molecules and bacteria trapped inside the web of polyester are mostly staying safe from all that soap and water, and the more we wear them, the more they accumulate stink. There are some ways we can combat this. The internet is full of suggestions for the usual baking soda or vinegar treatments, though the easiest is probably to see if you can find a laundry detergent specifically developed for sportswear, usually with sport or something similar in the name, and use that according to the manufacturer's instruction, which should at least help alleviate the problem. Because when clothing is stinky and we feel like we are unable to get rid of the stink, 
it really does have an impact on the average lifespan of that piece of clothing. Professor McQueen again comes through with a study asking consumers in the US and Canada whether they A had perceived stink in a piece of clothing at one point, 98.7% said yes, and B of those who said yes, about half also said that they had at some point gotten rid of a piece of clothing because it had become too stinky to wear. Stinky clothes were also far less likely to be donated, sold or given away, but rather just tossed straight in the bin. Or, if it was lucky, delegated to areas of life where the stink would be less of a nuisance, such as heavy landscaping work. There is also the whole negative spiral of feeling stinky, making us shower and do laundry more often, stripping our skin and hair of natural oils and wearing our clothes out much faster, making us buy more products and more clothing that gets quickly stinky, and so we shower more often, and so on and so forth. <sighs> I also feel the need to point out that in all the reading that I did for this video, a unifying theme was that all those promises of antimicrobial clothing that smells less are largely marketing hogwash. Plus, overuse of antimicrobial products in general could increase resistance in microbes responsible for infectious diseases, so not ideal. So, with that minor mystery solved, thank you so much for watching and a special thank you to my patrons. Aren't you happy you support me so I can investigate weird curiosities like these? But you made it all the way here to the end, which probably means you're at least half as weird as I am. Hi, Baby.